Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery. It's be part 240, When God Speaks, part 2. Scripture teaches, <clears throat> a great judgment will be spoken by God, which will alter totally man's reality. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice, from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread <coughs> against all the inhabitants of the earth. So this is a judgment giving the understanding of the anger, the rage that will manifest from God against not only the human race, but he says the habitation. It's talking about the world, the planet, <clears throat> and a good, prob probably a good part of the creation. Can I ask a quick question here? Yes. Since we see the words, uh, the grapes, after as they that tread, are in italics, and we know that they were added, uh -huh. what do we understand as they that tread to actually mean? Uh, <clears throat> people that conquer. Okay. That's why I never read the grapes, right. because this is men's interpretation. The scripture consistently talk about you should tread upon your enemies. Right. Give a shout of victory. Gotcha, okay. So the voice which shouts Elohim from his habitations is a shout of victory as well as a sound of judgment? No, it's a shout of anger. Okay. Which also is, is translated in wars well, you conquer your enemy, you okay. tread him down, you're not exactly treating him with brotherly kindness. Okay. You're expressing your rage, <clears throat> and this is exactly what God is doing. Right, but the point I'm getting to is that the victoriousness is included in the judgmental anger. Yes, okay. it's an expression of um, accomplishing something that he wants okay. to take place because he is so what's the word I want to use um, upset at what's been going on uh, as far as the human race is concerned <coughs> and the scripture is consistently talking about <coughs> his detestation at the activities that take place in the uh, habits of men <clears throat> which have become consistently more and more detestational to him that they become more and more reprehensible to him to reach a point where he speaks <clears throat> and the rage that he speaks is vocalizing a change that he's commanding to take place in this deterioration He's blotting it out, he's neutralizing it, he's taking it and he's putting it out of his sight, which is what's going to happen in this situation. He's going to radically change this whole order because it's so corrupted and detestable that um, he refuses to have it endure any longer by the changes that's going to take place. <clears throat> which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches the current world of Adamic man will be destroyed by the wrath of God. Jeremiah 4, verse 23 to 26. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Tohu faboru. That's what you read in Genesis, the first chapter. <clears throat> and the heaven 
and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. He's in a rage. Uh, heaven help those that, you know, are the focal point of God's rage because there's no, nothing that you can do. Absolutely not. If you have the Creator ang this angry at you, I can't imagine. You, yeah. That's it. Well, you can see that taking place all around. Mm. People have less and less and less respect for God and the things of God. Yes. People are shaking their fists at God. Uh, here's Sunday. You know, Sunday, everybody, everybody in this country knows that Sunday has always been a day to worship the Lord. You Amen. take a look around you. The tennis courts, mm -hmm. people doing their stuff. I was looking when I was driving here at uh, the park over there. They got the baseball games going on. Oh, it's just another day. No respect for God. <clears throat> and um, people take life for granted. Take God for granted. This is not Thank being you. missed by the Creator. And it's just building, store. people are storing up wrath for themselves. Knowingly. People say, well, you know, um, uh, it's a choice between me uh, taking time out to do what I've committed to do for the Lord or doing something else to something else always takes precedence. It's not lost on the Lord. All this stuff is being noted and all this stuff is going to result in a very, very unpleasant outcome. Yes. Hey, Mr. Jones, as you're speaking, I'm, I'm thinking about God's system, okay? So now, there is a, a precedence in God's system. God's system is, okay, there is God the Father, then the God the Son, and then the, the pillar angels, and so on and so forth. So there is a hierarchy established. Every one of those are holy in nature. They're, they come from a holy spot and their intent and purpose is to give holiness to the lower beings. Now, man has got to a place where he, he has a similar system where he has a hierarchy, but its control is what the, the precedence is and then also profit. So, you see that man's system could include holiness, teaching, bring, bringing up developing potential out of beings to where we're giving and taking from each other each other because you have a potential your potential is higher than mine from my perspective okay and that might be speaking from limitation but what, what I'm trying to say is that the holiness of God is excluded it's not even brought up there isn't there isn't a purpose for putting God into your life now if you go to the Muslim community you get these people bowing down three or four times a day, you know, heading north, and they have this ritualistic description or mannerism, which is they're worshiping their God. So there, you see our enemies, or, or, the, or the lesser, they're doing in a distorted fashion, but they, they have their, their hierarchy system completely different than the Western system. Mm -hmm. That's just... We go, we go about business as this, this is average, normal, typical, expected. Yep. It's, it's all a lie. It's, it's, yes. so, it's so distorted. It's so, it's so comfortable that it has nulled us, it distorted us to, to actually understand where we're at in God's master plan. That's right. That's right. And it's not self. It's for others. That's right. <clears throat> but let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches regions that are currently locked up will then be released to dominate the human race. In other words, the human race is going to be disenfranchised from its custodianship over the earth 
former regions that were under the ancient races that themselves brought upon themselves a judgment are going to again be released and these ancient races are going to again be given custodianship over the surface of the earth. Turn to Job, 8th chapter, excuse me, um, Job 38 verses 8 to 10. Well, who shut up the sea with doors? Why was the sea shut up with doors? Because of the revolt of the ancient races under Lucifer. Who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it. Now, people wouldn't understand this because they would look at this from a human perspective. There is no ocean in the visible realm that has a cloud wrapped around it. But in the Luciferian era, it did exist. The conditions existed where that could take place. And break up for it my decreed place and set bars and doors. And so hitherto shalt thou come and no further, and here shalt thou proud ways be stayed. So this is a notion in which limitation has been constructed around it, that it cannot function beyond a certain parameter. That is going to be taken down and that <coughs> ocean again and its inhabitants and its activities are going to dominate the earth scene. In that domination and in the appearance <coughs> of these currently undetected regions, mm -hmm. will the physical topology, you know, the, the shape of the mountains and the land of the earth change to receive this. Sure. Okay. The whole so, topography so, of this planet is going to change. Okay. So let's say we, you know, we're, we're looking at these, this, these, these houses here. Mm -hmm. As this becomes apparent, these houses just disappear. Well, not necessarily disappear. They get rearranged. Remember Isaiah said, every high place is going to be brought low, every right. low place is going to be brought high. Right. The, 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 the configuration. configuration of what currently exists mm -hmm. is going to greatly alter. Those mountains over there, going to alter uh, everything is going to shift it's not going to be a one-time thing it's going to be a phased shift okay. continuing into the tribulation period and the millennial stage the earth is consistently going to go undergo change preparing it for ultimately the kingdom establishment okay. should we further understand that through the millennium um, right to the, the very end the, the great white seat this change continues until it just disappears. No. Because that's the last thing we see, isn't it? The Earth no longer exists. No. Uh, what will happen in the millennial stage will be the completion, which is a sort of a semi-spiritual condition. Okay. At the end of that, it's going to be burnt up. All the elements are going to uh, cease to exist, replaced by an eternal state. Right. Is the new heaven and new earth. Is the implication that during the millennium, the millennium period, everything which is currently undetected will appear, and that which is currently here will also be able to be seen? Yes, you can say that, but in a phased progression. Because at that point, just like now, we're beginning to enter into this new reality. This reality is designed not for the human race. Right. It's designed for superior beings. Okay. Yes. So this phase change that you're describing right now, who's doing the directing? Father. Okay. Everything's gonna be under his hand. Right. But he's going to he's going to move upon lesser beings yes. to do specific things to bring about his plan. So we'll look to those lesser beings, I'm thinking now about uh, strictly the angelic class, that they are the ones who are doing it. Yep. Particularly the fallen beings, they're, they're going to think that they are engineering all this because they're basically just puppets right. being used to bring about their own demise and don't realize it. Starting with Lucifer. But anyway, let's go on. 
We talked about this ocean. This is going to be an example. As a matter of fact, you can make this comment. You can make this lesson for general distribution. Okay. They need to know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this ocean is an example of the change that's going to take place in the human environment. Turn to Revelation 12, verse 12. You see the ultimate position that the ocean takes in its relationship to the, to the earth, the sea, if you will. going to play an important part in the life of the Luciferians, <clears throat> both fallen and unfallen, reaching into the latter part of the tribulation period. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens. Here you see the connection here. The stuff that's hidden now is going to be open at that time. Rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. This sea is currently hidden. There's going to be a dominant force in the life of men at this time. The connection between the heavens, the earth, and the subterranean are going to be in a unbroken uh, progression. This currently, according because of the father's plan for his sons, necessitated structural uh, limitations because these beings had to be confined so they couldn't interfere with God's progression of plan for his son's development. At this time, this plan has already taken place. The sons have been glorified. They're in the heavens now. The lower regions now are all interconnected. Heavens, earth, subterranean, the ocean that we read about in Job, all that is now part and parcel of life on earth. Should we understand that the swaddling band which restrained the hidden sea, the current hidden sea, will be removed. Sure. Okay. Sure. So that we won't, we won't see clouds then. Clouds won't be seen around it. Oh, no, no, no. But you're going to see something different. Okay. You're going to see a combination of things that because of the limitation, the swallowing ban were limited, but when that's taken down, then those forces are going to be free to flow again across the spectrum of the creation. Earth, remember, is not a planet. It's a matrix. It has compartments to it. Some are unattainable. Others are attainable, even from a human perspective, depending upon where you're, where you're going, what you're doing. Hell mm -hmm. is a spiritual compartment at this point. Right. It's going to become physical. Mm -hmm. Yes. The new Earth. Yeah. Is it going to be put together the same way this one is? A matrix? Mm hmm Okay. Interesting. No hell inclusion though, right? No. But it's all going to be on a spiritual plateau. <clears throat> you know, they're going to incorporate things that basically only advanced beings can uh, participate in. Will there be any fallen advanced beings? Oh. In the new earth. No. Okay. The purity. It talks about only righteousness <coughs> will exist on the new earth. Are all righteous immortals? Yes. So to be immortal, you have to be righteous. Yes. And therefore, if you're not righteous, then what's the lifespan of the unrighteous? Well, it depends on which sector you're referring to. Humans who are Jews, humans who are not Jews. If we're looking at the millennial period. No. After the millennium. Eternal? Yes. Oh, well, it's engaged. It's it's it basically engaged in terms of life. Okay. Immortals exist in stages of life experience. Anything that does not have life is not immortal. It is in a death zone, relegated to a death experience for eternity. 
So there's no comparison there. Right. Either you're alive or you're not. Or you're, gotcha. or you're dead. Experiencing death. Yeah. So is the aspect that you're, you're just now referring to, the immortals, they are going about life. Are they living abundant life the way Christ has described it? Yes. To a degree. The highest degree isn't experienced by anybody except God. The sons will aspire to that degree. Nobody else will because, experience it. Because that was meant for the sons. That that <coughs> that comment, that statement was meant for the sons. Yes. So in, in his uh, question, should we understand that all life is abundant, but abundance has hierarchy? Yes. Mm. Depending on the, your status is how far you you experience. How far you are willing to allow yourself to experience life. Jesus said, I come that they might have life. Right. You can have life. Do you wish to experience it abundantly to right. the maximum? Right. right. Life on earth is beautiful. Mm. In the time of the before the fall, sure. paradise. Mm -hmm. I mean if you, you look at the way things are described there in the book of Genesis, man, this, you would think this is the essence and quintessence of existence. But that's just the bottom stage. Mm. We are given an opportunity to go to an unlimited experience in Christ, in the life of Christ. Whatever level you desire, that's the level you're going to wind up on. bringing us this revelation and now we own it we wouldn't know it if you hadn't had done what you do and passed it on to us and Amen. thank you for Amen. doing that brother <laughs> I love doing it <laughs> but let's go on the little time that we have we just get we, we haven't even started <laughs> that's given you an example of the world that's going to come about starting with the beginning of sorrows which starts with a pronouncement of judgment on this decaying abomination that man is taken under satanic influence to a degree that is a detestation, detestation in the sight of God. It's going to change it all. <clears throat> Scripture teaches these regions were at one time connected to the earth. So in Exodus 20, verses 3 to 4. <clears throat> Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. We just saw that in Revelation 12, 12. Rejoice ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. So you have the connection being made, Revelation, that currently is all separated because the Father's plan hasn't been completed for His sons. What was happening here is that beings were coming in contact with the human race and bringing it into subjugation to the individual beings. Men would just make contact and immediately venerating, worshiping the being that they were contacting. Sight unseen. All they had to do is look. That was it. They captured. Yes. So, God is waiting for the enemies to fulfill their destiny before he, uh, he unleashes his sons upon them to clean up the mess. It's, it's a bad way to interpret it. But it just it seems that way. Of course, this is one perspective, and a human speaking it. Give us an elaboration of what God is waiting for to happen so that the sons can ultimately take their positions in eternity. Glorification. Glorification. And that takes 
the time to develop the suns, each one in its way to the point where the XY axis crosses in the life of that sun, and he accepts his destiny and steps into the position God has for him. We've talked about how that's going to progress. It's going to start, start, I can't emphasize this enough, start at the beginning of sorrows. You're going to have one generation that are going to be taught by a lesser group that have been prepared before that generation to receive what the Father has for them. This is all preliminary stuff, and I believe one reason for it is to give those humans who have a temporal calling an opportunity to receive what those that have the eternal calling are going to receive. And for the most part, they've blown it. Uh, so we know that there's several things that need to fall in place at the beginning of sorrow. Okay, we know things that are going to happen. The glorification, Brother Jones, are we all glorified at the same time? Yes. Okay. Yes. But we know so this, oh. this, this. Each man in his own order. How does that apply? That's to progressing that? to the glorification. <laughs> Everybody progresses in his own way. No two are alike. So the Father has engineered experiences for each one. So your experiences is something, his experience is something, my experience, each man in his own order. But Christ, the first fruits, so they all come together at one time. Who are you describing as the lesser group prepares the group that will teach? Who are you referring to? The le I mean, less in numbers are the okay. teachers All right. that are going to prepare right. for the that one gotcha. generation from who are going to come out of every area of the earth. You've redeemed us out of a kindred tongue, gotcha. people, and nation. It's a one-time occurrence because mm. they're all talking about the same thing that happened to them on a global scale right. at the same time. Right. The gospel is going to be preached from heaven. Everyone's going to hear those that receive will progress. The X, Y axis crosses. The teachers are brought. The students are ready. The father's clock has started to tick. Okay.